And the only thing left for chapter nine is this uh, effective stress with seepage. So, so far, what we have been discussing is basically effective stress calculation for hydrostatic condition or artesian condition. There's no water flow through soil. Okay. So today I want to spend a few minutes on this last point here, last topic, effective stress with upward and downward seepage. And then uh, we have a few more examples left. And um, I'll, I'll, so I'll talk about those examples. In the first scenario, so basically we have a couple of scenarios here for effective stress with seepage. So the first scenario here is effective stress with upward seepage. In the setup, it's pretty simple. So if you look at this figure on the side, we have this soil specimen. And this soil specimen is submerged uh, in water. So we have water table actually distance h above this soil specimen. So this point A is basically the top of the soil specimen. So we have some water body above soil. And the uh, thickness of the soil specimen is h2. So that's the setup. And we have an inflow from the bottom up, so the flow direction. So this is a simple setup for uh, upward seepage. And to show how this impacts effective stress calculation, I'm going to pick uh, an arbitrary point. So just point C within this soil specimen. So if we focus on this point here, so this point C is located at a distance Z below the top of this soil specimen. So just any arbitrary point. Okay. So point C. And then what we know from this seepage, so we have basically the total head loss here. So this small h. So this is the difference between the water head at the inlet. So the top right one, this is the inlet water pressure. Inlet is basically the bottom of the soil specimen since the water is flowing upward. Okay. So that's the inlet. And the water pressure at the outlet is measured using the left um, standpipe or piezometer. Okay. And the difference between these two is the total head loss we call small h. Okay. And then the head loss at point C, so you can measure the pore pressure at C using just simple interpolation. And this is pretty simple. So basically, this is small z over h2 times uh, total head loss h. So that's just a simple interpolation, how you, how you get that per pressure at c. Okay. So with this setup, then let's look at the effective stress at point c. Okay. So at point c. And we're going to use the same effective stress equation. So sigma prime equals to sigma minus u. So that always applies. So this is the effective stress equation. Again, you can always use this equation to calculate effective stress, no matter which direction the water is flowing. So this, in this expression, let's first find total stress. So total stress sigma c. Okay. So total stress accounts for everything on top. So it accounts for soil, accounts for water. Okay. And this is a case where we have water above basically this soil specimen. So we need to account for that H1 uh, times unit weight of water. So we need to account for the weight of water. Okay. So this accounts for that uh, just water body above the soil. And then we have at point C, we also have basically this Z of soil. So Z times unit weight, saturated unit weight of soil. Okay. So this is total stress. Again, everything on top. No matter it's saturated soil or water, so we account for no. And then the pore pressure at C, you see. So pore pressure at C basically is the height of water column in the standpipe. So this, this one in the middle, this is basically at point C. So this is, this measures point C. 
So this pore pressure is basically the height of this water column times unit weight of water. And if you look at this height here, it has actually two components. The first component is if I measure the distance from this water surface to this point C. So this first component, this is the hydrostatic portion, okay? meaning if you don't have any flow, if you don't have artesian pressure, water is going to rise to the free surface. So that's the first portion, and that is basically H1 plus Z. And the second portion of pore pressure at point C is due to the upward seepage, and that distance is this portion here. Okay. So this portion is small h over h2 times d. It's basically this value here. So this is the total height of water column inside that standpipe at point C. Okay. And time that by unit weight water. Okay. So this is a pore pressure at C. Again, we have this is the hydrostatic component. And this second part comes from the upward seepage. So that's the total pore pressure at point C. And once you have these two values or these two expressions, effective stress is just the difference. Okay, that's pretty simple. So sigma C prime. And if you substitute these two expressions, you have this final value. So this is So I'm simply substituting these two uh, expressions into effective stress equation and move terms around. Okay. And this last expression here, okay. gamma saturated minus gamma water, that's by definition buoyant unit weight. So we call that gamma prime or gamma B. So this is buoyant. And then that small h over h2, so this term here, okay. So this is the total head loss. So that small h is total head loss over the distance, h2. That's the thickness of the soil specimen. By definition, that's hydraulic gradient. Okay. So this is I. Again, small h is total head loss. And this is distance. So this is something uh, we covered in chapter seven. When we talk about permeability, we define this hydraulic gradient concept. So this is hydraulic gradient. So with these two definition, then we can write uh, this effective stress sigma C prime as Z times gamma prime minus I Z gamma water. So that is the expression for effective stress at C due to upward seepage. In this expression, gamma prime buoyant unit weight, small i is hydraulic gradient. So if you look at this last expression here, uh, compared to the hydrostatic case, the first portion, if you don't have any seepage, that's how you calculate effective stress at point C. We use the uh, buoyant unit weight to calculate effective stress. So we have uh, done a couple examples on this. And the second part is due to the seepage, the upward seepage. So you can tell from this last expression, the effect of this upward seepage is actually to decrease your effective stress because you have to subtract that, uh, that seepage component. So it's to decrease. So the upward seepage decreases the effective stress in the soil. So this is uh, uh, this last expression here. So let's focus on this one. So if you focus on this one, uh, there's a limiting state. So 
if you continue to increase your upward flow, the hydraulic gradient I will increase. And there's a limiting point where this effective stress at point C becomes zero. Okay, so that's a limiting state. So this is a limiting state. Okay. So a limiting state is where sigma C prime is zero. And this is called quick condition or, or boiling condition. So that's when basically your soil particles are losing contact with each other. So remember effective stress measures green to green contact force. If effective stress is zero, that means there's no green to green contact and your, your soil particles are like in the boiling water. So that's why it's called boiling condition. And you can derive using that sigma C prime equation. So I'm going to call this so this is at zero effective stress. So I'm to call that critical uh, that hydraulic gradient uh, critical hydraulic gradient. So ICR. Okay. So you can solve for this critical hydraulic gradient that causes zero effective stress. So it's a hydraulic gradient that causes zero effective stress mm -hmm. in soil. And this ICR, I critical is typically between 0, 0 0.0 and uh, 0.9 and 1.1. And the average of uh, uh, this critical gradient is, typically is one. So that's a critical hydraulic gradient. Again, this is caused due to upward seepage. So then uh, this is upward seepage. The next case, is, uh, next case is downward seepage. And that is very similar to upward seepage as well, except uh, the direction of flow is different. So we have downward flow. So for effective stress with downward seepage, again, we're going to look at this point C here. And at point C, we are going to use the same equation. So the total stress sigma C. So this is the same as the previous one. So just everything on top, we have the weight of water, H1 times gamma unit weight of water plus Z times gamma saturated. Okay, so that's total stress. And then pore pressure. Again, this time uh, there are two components as well. So we have the hydrost hydrostatic portion, and then you have the, um, the one due to seepage. Okay. And this H over H2 times Z that again comes just interpolation. Okay. So we know the total head loss we can interpolate to find pore pressure at any point. So that's UC. And if you take the difference, so you have this effective stress as C as, so very similar to, to the previous one. And we can again using, uh, we can use this um, point unit weight. gamma prime and hydraulic gradient. Very similar to the previous case, except the sign is uh, different. So we have the hydrostatic portion plus the seepage one. So look at this last equ equation here. So the effect of downward seepage is actually to increase the effective stress in soil. And then this seepage force per unit volume. So this last uh, term here, the seepage force per unit volume, it's actually associated with the last term of effective stress equation here. So it's defined as hydraulic gradient I times unit weight of water. Okay. 
So that's the force due to seepage of water. So this is seepage force per unit volume, I gamma W. 